Now we've looked at our examples up the top here um, and we have our main website ready to go. We're going to insert our desktop nav. I've called that just DT nav, um, just for convenience sake, uh, having a shorter name than desktop nav or desktop navigation. Um, is, it's just a little bit more convenient. DT nav, it explains what it is um, and just makes a lot more sense to me. So I'm going to go to my websites that I have up for the tutorials. I'll start just on this left hand side one here. These are all linked from StudyNet um, if you're using that. And you can see just W3 schools. W3 schools is great because what it does is it actually breaks down all of the different parts to what we need to do here. So we have all these different types of drop downs that we can make. They're basically the same thing really overall, but we want to make this one here a drop down menu rather than just drop down text, which just says hello or a drop down image. We want specifically a drop down menu because we're making a navigation bar. Uh, and you can see in this example here, it includes basically everything you need for the first example. I'm going to scroll all the way down until I get to drop down menu. I'm actually going to go all the way past it, right down the bo bottom here because it's got drop down nav bar. So this is the whole navigation bar, including the drop down menu. And this is what I want to do. Um, so I'm going to come to try it yourself at the bottom here, this button here. That will open up a new page which includes all of the code and I can test this code over on the right hand side to see how it all works. It's broken down into a style section. Now this is all inline styles or sorry embedded styles. Okay so that would all be inside the HTML document. We aren't working that way at this stage so what we want to do is we're going to be putting some of this code into our CSS documents, our external linked CSS documents. We come further down, we've got the HTML down here. Um, and with some of our other examples, we will also have script at the bottom. But for this, all we need to worry about is just this navigation bar at the top here. You can see it's exactly the same as the one I have in the example because this is what I've used. So all I really need to do is start taking this code from here and putting it into my own work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole list, just going to take the HTML elements first. I could, of course, if I wanted to, create this menu from scratch myself by adding an unordered list, just by the insert panel, adding each list item individually, um, or I could do this without doing it with list items and unordered lists, but this tends to be the more efficient way of doing it, so I'm going to do it this way. Okay. You can see that the drop-down itself is a div which contains three links, one on top of another, and that's it. So looking out for the tags, making sure you understand where all the tags are. So in this case, the main tag for us to notice is the drop-down content and the drop-down button. So one of these things is a button, this guy here, and these three things are our drop-down li uh, links, which is listed as drop-down content. So I'm going to take the whole list, and all I need to do is, if I want to change any of these things, come and edit it when I've got it in to my own document. So I'm going to right-click, I'm going to go to Copy, I'm going to come to my Dreamweaver document here, find where I want it. This is going to need to go in Desktop Navigation, so I'm just going to make a little bit of space here. Just by entering between those two points, text is gone from up here now. I'm just going to Control v to paste. And there's my own list. You can see what it looks like in my uh, my split view here, my live view up the top. This is a completely unstyled, unordered list. So you've got the bullet points, you've got them as links because they're all uh, active items with the A tag there, right? And each one is a link to nothing at the moment. We'd need to change those links to our other pages. Currently, I haven't made those. This is just my template that I'm currently making. So, uh, what I need to do now is just change anything I think needs changing. I might also add some of these notes in here. Now, notes are really useful if you're, you're doing this for the first time, particularly, because you can use this as an example if you ever need to do it again. You can come back and you can look at your coding and say, right, well, this is my main header code. So, there's everything that's in my main header. Great, this is just showing me I've got my header unit and then the logo div inside that. 
This is my navigation code. This is a main navigation bar. So there's a bar called main nav which contains mob nav and DT nav. So I might just put in a note between these two things that says uh, something like desktop navigation bar uh, and I could put with drop down with drop down All right uh, now I just put in this little note thing here which is just um, these symbols here as you can see so closing with the pointy bracket and the two hyphens and starting with a pointy bracket an exclamation mark and then two uh, hyphens there so that gives me a little bit of space to keep this code separate sometimes it's nice to just keep the code separate and neat and tidy whoops so that you can come back and look at it again later uh, yep yeah, there you go now I can see that's all nice and neat and tidy that'll do good right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to start making some changes now I don't need mine to say home news drop down link one link one two link three but I'm going to stick with those for now if I want to add a new list item I can either do that in my design view so I swap to design view I can come in here and I of course can just tap enter and you see in the code down here it adds a new list item and I could add something like about in here All right I'm going to need to make it a link as well so I need to highlight it uh, bring up my properties window properties and then I just pop in my hash there to make that a link to nothing just an undefined link and there you go now I've got an extra link in there if I want it right and that'll do so that's fine for now I don't really need to do much else to that but obviously it looks pretty hideous in terms of design so I am going to need to make sure that um, I go and style that and that is where the tutorial comes in again just close my properties quickly here come back to my uh, website which has got all the W3Schools tutorial open and then I just look through all of their CSS code and see what I think is relevant. Now you're not always going to find every single bit of code is relevant, but in this case, actually, pretty much all of it is. Because that's to do with my unordered list, and it styles it. So it says list style type none here. That would give me no bullet points. Uh, the list items are all floating to the left, so they sit next to one another. The drop down content has all of these different properties attached, so on and so forth. So these are the properties within the CSS. As I say, you can make this manually, but we don't need to. The important thing to remember when you are copying the code from somewhere else into your own code, is that you always go from the beginning of the tag, or from the beginning of the uh, selector name, in this case, for CSS, all the way past the first curly bracket and make sure you end up with an even number of curly brackets. So this curly bracket or what's called a curly brace, this is an open curly brace, here's a closed one, that's that open and closed. That's open and closed, that's open and closed, that's open and closed, so on and so on and so on until I get to the bottom here. And I make sure I include that curly brace there. I don't need the style thing, that's a HTML tag because it's in the pointy brackets. I'll right click and again I'll copy I'm going to go to my Dreamweaver document, bring up the CSS, which needs saving, and then I'm just going to pick somewhere in here to put it. Now I probably can just put it in global view, I'll hide the navigation bar separately later. All of this stuff down here under my media query is my desktop view, um, but this can go in my global view because when I actually get to my navigation I'll hide this stuff later. So I'm going to pop it in, there's a bit of space here. Um, again, I could add a, a note here. I'm not going to do that in this case because I haven't got notes elsewhere. Control V and it pastes it all in. Now I should find when I click back up here that styles that the way I want it to. If I look at it in live, you should see a better version. And that's it. That is my drop down all sorted. So let's give it a chance to load. But there you go. That's that in place. Now there's a couple of things I will want to do just to make this code. 100% work 
for me, the way I want to do it. Now you can do this in the code directly if you want to, or if you prefer the CSS designer, you can come and edit it here. So if you load up your CSS designer, window, CSS designer, if you haven't got it open already, mine's just floating window up top here. You can see now in global, making sure you click on your sources and then global, that in here, I should have all of those drop down elements, all those list item elements, um, and then anything else it needed. So it should all just come after social because that's the, the order it is in my CSS document. So if you put things sensibly in your CSS document, they should come up here more sensibly as well. Um, now there's a couple of things I could do here. First of all, I can look at all of the stuff that's set. So if I make sure this is ticked up here, it says show set, I can see that this is what sets my background color for my unordered list. So this is that dark gray there. Now I might actually make this the same dark gray or I might change the color entirely to um, a nicer color that fits more with my background. So I might say I want it this blue color um, or I might want it a different color. So I just come here and I can change that. I can say, you know what, let's make this kind of a deep orange color or maybe just a lightish orange color like that. See if that looks any good. Not really with the text, so I'd need to adjust my text. But the highlight works on it. It works well enough on the highlight. Uh, now I could change the text across the whole thing here. I will find that actually if I scroll down, you'll see that there are text color options in other places. So coming down, I can just click through and see what everything is. So list items here, all they're doing is they're floating. List item A and drop down links. All right. Now that's a compound path because it's list items that are also links or links that are also list items or things that are tagged with the drop button. Now I might make these a slightly different color. Let's say I want these to be a darker color. Let's put them to almost black, but not quite. And I should see now, there you go. Got this color there, looks good, like it. And I just come down and I just go through, what's my hover look like? Well, there you go, that's the red background change. So I think red doesn't really fit my design here all that well. Let's maybe make this a little bit subtler, maybe a somewhere in the middle orange there. I'm trying not to use full uh, saturation colors generally across my design here. So let's maybe make something a little more subtle like that. All right, that looks nice. Good, if my drop down's looking okay. There's still a bunch of properties I can change for my drop down in here, and you can see that. Currently, they just is got a display of inline. That's all right. It's okay. Here's the actual background color of the whole unit, the drop down content tag here, which we saw in our HTML was just here, the class for this div, which has those three links inside it. Right. I'm not going to go through and mess with this any further because I think you get the idea, but that is now a drop down menu and it works, it does everything I need. All I need to do is link those to the appropriate places. 